This is the Electronic Church of God, Arizona, presenting the Lord's Care Ministry, provided by James Berg, narrated by Forrest Grote. Thank you. Welcome to April 14th, the first day of a week, the day that they shall call Sunday, the Lord calls it the first day of the week, and after sundown tonight is when the Lord changed the emblems of the Passover to our toast and wine to risen bread and wine. If you don't believe me, check your own Bible. And tomorrow is a day that the Christ died. They call it the Passover day. The Passover happened at midnight. Read your Bible what we call 12 o'clock and I believe they call it the second watch but it's at midnight when the Passover occurred well brother let's get right on over into the Lord's care ministry a year to keep your eyes on heaven day 106 of the year 2011 Today we're going to talk about Alive in Christ. I suggest, brethren, you write the chapter and verse it down on a pad and paper so that you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. You can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you'll be able to pick up your Bible, read chapter and verse with us. Well, with that... Let's get right into a life in Christ, and to do that, we'll go to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, and also Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3. That's where we're going to start our study. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3. You died when Christ died. And your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Somewhere in the night, around 1 a.m., 18-month-old Erica awoke from her sleep and began walking around the house. Maybe she was in a trance. Or maybe she wanted a glass of milk. Who knows for sure? They only knew that somehow... Erica ended up outside. She walked out the back door and into the cold night, barefoot on the frozen snow. Twenty feet from the house, Erica lay down on the ground, curled up into a ball, and died. Tiny footprints wound throughout the yard as if they were in a strange daze. Her mother was the first to find her. It was around five in the morning before she noticed her little girl missing. She screamed and ran to the child, cradling her stiff and lifeless body in her arms and sprinting back into the house. She called 911, and within minutes the paramedics were there trying desperately to rely to revive little Erica. All the way to the hospital they tried, but to no avail. Further efforts were made in the emergency room, but no one could bring Erica back to life. Suddenly, after hours of frustration, almost out of nowhere, 
a nurse noticed a sign of breath. The baby's heart monitor beeped. Her eyes twitched. Erica was coming back. The doctors worked feverishly, and within a few minutes, she woke up. Tired, but very much alive. Before the week was out, Erica had fully recovered. One moment, Erica was dead, and the next she was back among the living. Her mother was days away from burying her little girl, and instead found her embraced her child once again. It is likely that Erica and her mother will forever carry this moment of destiny with them. Her mother will retell the story in detail to anyone willing to listen. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5 we read, Even while we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. Paul reminds us, At one time, we were all just like Erica, dead in sin, no hope of the future among the living. Then suddenly, Jesus changed all that. He de defeated death and brought us back, and now we breathe again. How can we help but let it forever change the way we see our future? How often do you reflect on the gift of life that Jesus brought to you? How should that change the way you view yourself and others? I live but in thee. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never giving up that trust. Never following the tradition of men. Because following the tradition of men make void the word of God. Some take today as an Easter. You find it in the old King James. It's the word that they use is pasta. Meaning Passover. And that after sundown tonight, at around what our time would be is around 8, 9 o'clock, is when Christ took that Passover meal that changed the emblems. They took all the next day gathering the goods so they could leave Gosha. Well, brethren, we should take the Passover tonight and leave Gasha, leave our sin, leave it up to Christ. For the next day, brethren, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and for a whole week, he asks you not to eat leavened bread or bread break with leaven. That is a command of his. And if you want to follow him, you follow his commands. Well, brethren, if you want to follow Christ in the way that he prescribed, get down on your knees and repent for following the tradition of men of pushing them little bunny eggs around. That is a falsehood of the tradition of men. Get down on your knees and ask the Lord for forgiveness. Now wipe all of the tradition of men out of your head. Ask him to show you the narrow path to salvation. Brethren, while you're on your knees, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of the word that is found in the Bible that you should have before you. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.